We want to hear from you. Send me a tweet about the show. That's at Howard Kurtz, and we'll read the best ones at the end of the program. President Obama is again trying to seize the media offensive after getting pummeled by the press over Syria. He taped an interview with ABC's George Stephanopoulos that aired earlier today on This Week. President of the Council of Foreign Relations, Richard Haas, words like ad hoc, improvise, unsteady come to mind. This is probably the most undisciplined stretch of foreign policy in your presidency. What do you make of that? Well, you know, I, I think that folks here in Washington uh, like to grade on style. And when the president sat down with anchors from NBC, ABC, CBS, CNN, Fox, and PBS, the question signaled a widespread view that his strategy didn't quite seem to add up. Are we back from the brink? Is military strike on pause? Absolutely. If it I mean, are we talking a pinprick, no. a knockout blow, a punch in the gut? The, the, the U.S. does not do pinpricks. How do you persuade members of Congress and the American people who yeah. are overwhelmingly in new yeah. polls out today not in favor of this Absolutely. idea? And I guess my question is, how much responsibility do you think you bear mm -hmm. for the opposition? The president's televised address from the East Room also drawing decidedly mixed reviews. Joining us now, as she does every week, Lauren Ashburn, Fox News contributor and a former managing editor of USA Today. Steve Roberts, a former New York Times correspondent and professor of media and public affairs at the George Washington University. And David Zurich, television and media critic for The Baltimore Sun. Why, Lauren Ashburn, uh, in the, does, did the president feel the need to go on television again after this week-long media, media blitz? And was George Stephanopoulos tough on him? George, I think, had a very good interview with him. He asked the questions that needed to be asked, Howie. He asked, is President Putin playing you, which I think a lot of people want to know. He said, is it a victory if Assad is still in power? And how much time does he have to give up those weapons? And to your, to your first question, why does President Obama want to go on TV? Are you crazy? Of course he wants to go on TV to get out the message that I believe the U.S. is the one that... Um, let's say, pushed President Putin to make this, saying... But the message seems to be a lot of the same talking points as we have heard all week from all the President. All week long. I, I listened this morning to the interview and looked at the transcript, as I did to all of the other ones. ABC Diane Sawyer, early in the week, President said, we had maintained a credible possibility of a military strike. Scott Pelley, he said to him, and if it doesn't continue to be a credible military threat from the U.S., Chris Wallace, credible threat of a military strike, and then today, taking credit again on George Stephanopoulos' show. Steve Roberts, even in straight news accounts, seems to me Obama is getting bad press on Syria, uh, whether he's going to war or pulling back or pursuing diplomacy, and even with this deal with Russia, um, doesn't seem to have changed very much. That's true. And let's one more bit of evidence to strike down the old uh, theory that the press is all liberal and they always are easy on Democratic presidents. That's always been the stupid idea and it's even more stupid now given these facts. The truth is the biases that animate any newsroom is that reporters are against whoever is in power in favor of a good story and they are appropriately being tough on the president. But the other reason is they're reflecting, I think, these um, uneasiness in the American public. Seventy-nine percent of the public told a, uh, NBC that they thought the president was being unclear. Two-thirds in every poll didn't agree with it. And I think the, the critics have been much louder than his supporters. And I think that is a key factor in the negative notion. Of, and even this morning, John McCain, Lindsey Graham, much right. more critical, much louder than his supporters. His supporters in the media have barely been audible. So as the president talked to Stephanopoulos, Scott Pelley, Diane Surrey, and the whole gang at the networks, David Zurich, uh, was there anybody who stood out as doing a particularly good or not so good job? Yeah, this isn't surprising. And people will say, I'm saying it because I'm on Fox. But traditionally, Fox has been the toughest on the president. And I've said in the past, a month into his administration, I said, thank God somebody's keeping his feet to the fire because I disagree with Steve. When his administration first came into power, the press was fawning. It was, it was shameful how the press rolled over. Fox was the only one, and they were retaliated against with being said they weren't. I think Chris Wallace did the best interview. Now, here, in fairness, Everybody was tough on him, appropriately tough, I think. But Wallace really did the best. And it's, it, you know, the clip you showed where he says Assad says there could be repercussions. You don't really know what's going to happen if you do it. That was his first question. Because Chris Wallace saw Brett Baer interview him and saw Obama try to lobby the time, stall, 
play uh, four corners and not give them any answers. And at one point, Wallace said, please, Mr. President, we don't have much time here. Right. And at the end, he asked a big, long question that Obama tried to mock, is saying, I'll try to give you a shorter answer. But he recounted all the ad lib Speaking of long answers, I got to jump in here. <laughs> President gave some long answers. I wanted to make my case President for that. Made some long, gave some long answers with Stephanopoulos this morning. Um, let's play a little bit of Charlie Rose sitting down with Assad because uh, he actually kind of scooped Obama because that air, interview aired on CBS and PBS later um, before the president even got out of the gate with those network anchors. Are you suggesting that if in fact there's a strike there would be repercussions against the United States from your friends in other countries like Iran or Hezbollah or others? Yeah, as I said, it's, it may take different forms, direct and indirect. Direct when people want to retaliate or government. An interview worth doing? Of course, it's an interview worth doing. You want to hear from the newsmakers, but that doesn't mean that there are some people out there who don't find this to be reprehensible, that we are giving an hour of airtime to a dictator, just as Dan Rather did in 2003 with Saddam Hussein. Did now, you find it to be reprehensible? Did it make you uneasy? It made me cringe. I don't want to hear from this fellow uh, because I think that it gave him the opportunity to lie. Now, that said, I'm a journalist, and I would have done that interview. I would have done it in a heartbeat, as I'm sure the two of you I, would have. I, I, absolutely. This whole notion that somehow either uh, Assad or Putin or anybody else should somehow be barred because we don't agree with them and they make us cringe, I mean, that is a profoundly anti-democratic, anti-American concept. The whole idea is we should know what they have to say, debate their ideas, and that, correct them and criticize them, but give them the time to make that case. That extends to Vladimir Putin, right? Absolutely. New York Times yeah. op-ed. I couldn't said, agree more with Steve. Uh, Steve I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, 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 I think wanna... that this whole notion that somehow we bar from our airwaves and our, and our public discourse people who we find reprehensible, that, I mean, it, I mean that, that's stupid. The but fact a lot of people we, believe no. that. Well, and, I think they're I mean, wrong. Assad and, is a thug and a murderer, so he, I can understand the emotional He may well reaction. be, but if you listen to that, you learn something also about how how we see our, how the world sees us and our own prejudices. At one point, and all praise to Charlie for getting that interview, and he's a great interviewer, I would never say that. But at one point he said them, you know, with thunder. The New York Times this morning says you have, on the front page, I'm quoting, you have the largest stockpile of weapons. And Assad basically said, would that be the same New York Times on its front page that said Saddam Hussein had stockpiles of weapons of mass destruction? And it showed us. And at one point, he said of our administration, he said, you know, my administration isn't a social media administration like yours where we do everything. He, there was a lot to learn from that interview. There really was. So all praise to Charlie Rose and CBS I on agree. that. And you also got to see this person who is called a dictator up close and personal, you know, as we say, eyebrows and chin, and, and see, is he lying? What do you think about what he's he saying? He was very robotic and very um, hard to watch when but he all, talked about also, chemical weapons. But also clever in yes. pressing on the single biggest weakness of the Obama uh, campaign, which is vast unhappiness in America with what happens next, Right, being let, involved in let, the Middle Let East. me come back to sort of the competing spins, because there was a pretty good story in the New York Times by Peter Becker the other day, which talked about the way Obama's supporters and opponents are dealing with his conduct on Syria. And it said that it gave the White House view, uh, in this view, uh, says the New York Times, uh, Obama is a nimble leader more concerned with getting the answer right than with satisfying a political class all too eager to second guess every move. Now, Obama with Stephanopoulos today says, well, I'm being graded on, this about st on style points rather than the result. And yet, when I pick up the papers today and I watch television, I don't see people saying, well, Obama did the right thing. He pulled back. He didn't have support in the country, and he got to a diplomatic agreement. Of course, we don't know what's going to happen with this disarmament agreement. But uh, why is the president getting so little credit for an outcome that seems to be more in line with what the country wants, which is no military action. But what the country also wants is clarity, and he has not been able to give them that. And I think his, a lot of his own supporters have been um, muted in their support of him, even We're, his best friends, because they have not been able to, to stand by the president and say he has made a clear and compelling case, because they don't believe he's made a clear where, and compelling case. Where are his case. friends in the media apparently abandoning him on Syria? Well, as is the public. 48% of voters consider his foreign policy weak. You have probably 10% of Democrats who agree with what he's doing, and even fewer opinion writers who are, are giving him a pass, including Demo in those oh. that lean Democratic. He's, okay. getting no, he's getting no nice words now because they behaved so 
erratically for two weeks. Look at the oh. look at the expert on Syria that uh, Secretary of State Kerry well, brought in uh, and me, held up to Congress as just, their guidepost. I, I, I've got to go to break, but what we say erratically, we in the press that look at every hour, the public may be more interested in where we end up.